the Kansas City Chiefs make the big move they needed to make and acquire DeAndre Hopkins in a trade. That and more on today's edition of Locked On NFL. The new Locked On NFL. The madman Tyler Rowland is your double shot of NFL espresso. With the Locked On local experts on every major story. Get ready, Roland is revving up. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Football fans, welcome in to the Locked On NFL Podcast, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with help from our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am your host, the madman, Tyler Roland, joined today as I am every Thursday by Locked On NFL expert, the data queen, Michelle Majuk. On today's show, we are going to talk about why the 49ers and Cowboys both need to go get a wide receiver as they get ready to match up this weekend. Also, the New Orleans Saints make another bizarre move, giving a contract extension to Alvin Kamara. But first, we're going to talk about this big trade in the NFL. The Kansas City Chiefs go out and get DeAndre Hopkins. First, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Thursday is Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure that you check out your favorite team's crossover episode and download the Prize Picks app. Use the code Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. So the Kansas City Chiefs make the move that, honestly, Michelle, not only on this show, but on my show, Locked On Titans, I have been talking about this move for weeks now that the Chiefs needed to go out and do this with the injuries that they have at wide receiver. They trade for DeAndre Hopkins. They're giving up a conditional fifth-round pick that can turn to a fourth-rounder if Hopkins plays 60% of the snaps and if the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl. I love this move for Kansas City. Listen, they had to make a move, right? Mahomes is averaging a career-low passing yards per game, a career-high giveaways per game. And, I mean, their running game's getting it done. Their defense is getting it done. But with Rasheed Rice uh, going to miss the rest of the season, Hollywood Brown, obviously, they never had him. They signed him mm-hmm. to be maybe their wide receiver one this year. Xavier Worthy's not quite ready to fully like be a wide receiver one yet. And then even Juju, who they're yep. trying to put into the Rice role, uh, gets a hamstring injury. So they had to make a move. I just don't know if the right move is this 32-year-old wide receiver receiver who yeah once was amazing and he's probably a hall of fame wide receiver but I I think he's over the hill I think it's done like we've already seen this play out with Julio Jones now trying to go to multiple teams like there's just come to point where you're done and I think Hopkins is done you know that's a fair take but I can tell you somebody who disagrees with that take and it's Chris Clark from Locked On Chiefs the Kansas City Chiefs are pushing all in for the three-peat this year they're training for star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins from the Tennessee Titans. I'm Chris Clark from Locked On Chiefs. This is a great move for this team. If you look at what has, they have struggled in, they have struggled in the red zone. Against the New Orleans Saints, they went to the red zone five different times. They got four field goals and a touchdown. They are currently 25th in the NFL in red zone percentage. This is a huge need for them. They need somebody that can step in and create red zone targets and give them the ability to score more points in the red zone. DeAndre Hopkins can do that. He is going to be a guy that can step in and be the jump ball guy, and he can step in and into Juju Smith-Schuster's role as well in some of the intermediate routes and play more of a slot wide receiver role for this team. This is a great move for Kansas City, and it is them trying to chase and become the first NFL team to win three straight Super Bowls. We will have much more today on Locked On Chiefs. So, I acknowledge some of the concerns that you have, Michelle. DeAndre Hopkins is certainly not the player that he once was. And as someone who covers him and watches the tape and breaks him down every single week, one thing that I would add to your concerns is DeAndre Hopkins has been really, really poor against press coverage. So if you expect him to be like an outside X receiver, that jump ball guy on the boundary, I think that there are some limitations there depending on the team that you're going up against. But I think Chris does make a good point that as a bigger slot guy used in the slot, maybe get him in a little bit of motion to make sure that he doesn't deal with press coverage. He can help them over the intermediate parts of the field. And the red zone concern that Chris brought up, I think is absolutely true. And and DeAndre Hopkins' best game for the Titans this year included a red zone touchdown where he literally just jumped over a cornerback for the Green Bay Packers, made a catch, and bullied two guys as he went into the end zone. So, While I do recognize your concerns, I also think that the Chiefs can use DeAndre Hopkins in a way to limit 
some of those concerns. I think the biggest thing to worry about is the knee injury. He had the partially torn MCL before the season. The Titans really limited early on. He's played more snaps in recent weeks, but will that linger? Will that show back up if he takes the wrong hit? He's certainly not the guy that he once was, and then you have the injury concern on top of it. Yeah, and a big thing for him has been not being able to get the separation he once was able to get in his younger Absolutely. age as well. And that's what really brought the downfall of Julio Jones, too. You just get to this age where you can't separate as well. And yeah. that's a huge part of this Chiefs offense, right? Now, maybe Andy Reid's system will help with that separation because it seems like all these guys are always wide open. When does Patrick Mahomes have to make a tight window throw? I don't think ever. I, I, his guys are right. just always wide open or he finds a guy wide open. We'll see. I mean, if Hopkins has any chance to come back to life, it's with the Chiefs, with Patrick Mahomes, Absolutely. right? And they needed to make a move. It's a cheap move. I actually thought maybe it was a little bit pricier than what Hopkins should have gone for. But I'm excited for him to get to be on this team. And if he, you know, goes to the Super Bowl, he deserves it. Yeah, and I think this is a move that they had to make. They couldn't afford to take all of Devontae Adams' money. They couldn't afford to pay for Amari Cooper, but because of the position the Titans are in, they're paying $2.5 million of his $5 million salary, which is only going to leave the Chiefs with, you know, we're a third of the way through the season now, a little over the third. The Chiefs aren't going to have to pay very much, probably just over a million dollars for Hopkins. So it makes sense. I think for them financially as well, it's something that they could afford to do that could still help move the needle, but there are obvious concerns. And I think you broke those down well on the Titans side of things. Obviously, Michelle, I'm in the trenches every day with the Tennessee Titans. This is the team that I cover. They're one in five. This is a tank job. You mentioned it. You, you thought it might be even a little bit pricey for DeAndre Hopkins. And I think you're right from a Titans perspective. I think this was a good move. They also trade Ernest Jones on the day and get back a fourth round pick after only paying a fifth round pick to get him. So a good move there in terms of a quick flip of an asset. From an outside perspective, real quick, what, what's your thoughts on where the Titans are at and whether the moves that they made today are, are, are good or bad? They're moves they have to make. I mean, these guys aren't helping them win anything right now. Like, why keep right. DeAndre Hopkins? A, he's yes. already on the decline, clearly. Like, on the mm -hmm. steep decline, maybe he can come back with a better team. But he's not helping you win anything. Also, you don't want to. At this point, you don't even want to. Like, God forbid he did, you know, catch a game-winning touchdown. You don't want that. You are in a free, <laughs> like, fully uh, rebuild mode, and that's what they should be in. They don't have a, their quarterback of the future. They have a lot of holes on the roster. They need to be selling any other pieces that can't help them in, you know, three to five years from now. Yeah, 100%. I'm with you. And that's a tough pill for a lot of Titans fans to swallow, but it's a pill that I am going to force down their throats, whether they <laughs> like it or not. But with that being said, that's enough Tennessee Titans talk for this show. Let's move on. Alvin Kamara got a big deal from the New Orleans Saints, and it really doesn't make any sense, but nothing in New Orleans makes sense these days. And we got a classic matchup this weekend, 49ers and Dallas Cowboys, but I think they both need a little bit of help. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Z Biotics and their pre-alcohol drink. Look, the pre-alcohol probiotic drink by Z Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to make your rough mornings after drinking easier. All right, here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotic your first drink of the night and then drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. I personally have used the pre-alcohol uh, pre drink from Z-Biotics. I had a big golf trip a couple of weeks ago, took this, uh, the pre-alcohol drink from Z-Biotics, woke up the next day on Sunday, and I felt great and ready to cover the NFL. So I make a good show for you guys every single Monday. But make sure that you drink the pre-alcohol and then drink responsibly, and then you're going to enjoy your tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use the code locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL. And use the code locked on NFL at checkout for 
10% off. All right, Michelle, let's continue today's edition of Locked On NFL. A lot of trades going on in the NFL. We got another big wide receiver one with the Chiefs trading for DeAndre Hopkins. We're going to talk about teams that still need to make a trade at the end of the show with the 49ers and the Cowboys. But now we got to talk about a team that should have traded a player instead of giving him an extension, and it's the New Orleans Saints. And, of course, the mastermind, Ross Jackson, had the news on that. Well, better late than never, I guess. I'm Ross Jackson, host of the Locked On Saints podcast, the New Orleans Saints, and running back Alvin Kamara finally reaching an agreement on an extension. It's two years, $24.5 million. We'll see what the actual contract looks like. But all that really matters here is that the New Orleans Saints finally got this done. This is a deal that should have gotten done during the offseason, whether it comes down to training camp or earlier this season after he scored four touchdowns against the Dallas Cowboys, whatever. The New Orleans Saints should have gotten this done much earlier, but hey, at least they got it done. Now Alvin Kamara gets to live out what it is that he's wanted all along, which is to be able to start and finish his career with one team, the New Orleans Saints. This is huge for Alvin Kamara, who of course has looked like his old self again in Clint Kubiak's new offense, at least when the offensive line is healthy, which is what it's trending towards getting back to after this five game losing streak for New Orleans. This is a need that this is a move that needed to get done and they finally got it done. Alvin Kamara will retire a New Orleans Saint. Okay, just I just want to say a few things in a row in a sentence, Michelle, and you tell me generally if it's a good idea. Five-game losing streak, starting quarterback injured, older running back, going to be 30 in July, big money extension. The Saints refuse to rebuild, so they're going to be stuck as a 6-11 and 11 to 8 and nine team forever uh, because they just keep kicking down this money down the line. And Saints fans love to remind people to see, we always get into the cup cup. Doesn't matter. It's why you're in this spot. It's why you right. can't ever win games. It's why you can't make the playoffs and have, you know, have a good roster where they're going to bring you anywhere. What is Kamara going to do for you? You're not as even close to a Super Bowl contender. Trade him away while you can get anything, just like the Titans did with DeAndre Hopkins. They really, truly believe there's something. I mean, Kamara's 29 years old already. That's already past the prime for running backs. His average yards per carry and average yards per touch have plummeted over the last couple of years. I don't care that he scored four touchdowns. If you get to play Mike Zimmer's defense every week, great, because those are the only two T or that's the coach that he had the six touchdowns against and the coach yep. he had four touchdowns against. Like, cool. But besides that, he's done nothing else that's impressive this year. He's whatever. This is such a stupid extension. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And to me, I hate to make it such a Titan-centric episode. I really do try to stay away from Titan stuff. But, I mean, I look at Derrick Henry. The Titans didn't trade Derrick Henry last year to the Ravens when they were having those discussions because of sentimental reasons. And Ross just talked about, you know, Alvin Kamara is going to be a saint until he retires. And that's like, we did this out of sentiment because the season is going bad and we just want the fans to be happy. And that is the worst way to conduct business because you know what Derrick Henry did? He left anyway and went to Baltimore and now you just get nothing for him. So the, the Saints doing this just to appease their fan base and have some sort of happiness in the season while also hurting themselves down the line. Yeah, they cleared out a bunch of salary cap space for next year, and they're going to be like, oh, they needed to. But the the payment is going to eventually come due. You will have to pay the piper eventually. And you, again, like you said, you're just kicking the can down the road and hurting yourself in the future for short-term gratification. And the Saints have done this so many years in a row. You say that's why they aren't winning games. You're right. They aren't able to get better because they have to focus every year on cutting more talent from their roster to become cap compliant, and they're just going to keep doing this and never swallow the pill that they need to swallow and have the bad season. This was the year to do it, and they still couldn't do it. Like, any logical Saints fan has to be incredibly disappointed. Yeah, I mean, come on. You lost the last five games. Derek Carr is injured. Maybe he'll be back. But also, it's Derek Carr. Like, you're you're waiting for him to save your season. Right, it's right. not going to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't get this. And they're going to just keep kicking it down the road until they change their GM, until they, they just, just deal with one terrible season where 
they have a terrible team because they have to eat up all this cap space because they don't want to keep pushing it down. And they're sooner or later, it's going to have to happen. But for now, I guess they're happy with their seven to nine wins. Yeah, the New Orleans Saints got further from a Super Bowl with the Camara extension than they did get closer. And I like, think you just brought up Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry yeah. looks great this year. You know who wouldn't be winning any more games if they had Derrick Henry? The Titans. Maybe one yes. more game. Like the they would not still be a strong playoff contender. They wouldn't even be right. close to still being a Super Bowl contender. That this is why it doesn't matter if Camara is still good. You get something for him and rebuild. Running backs are a luxury position, and you only pay them and you only go after them if. You're a team that is truly a contender, like we saw when the Lions drafted Jameer Gibbs. You know what I mean? Like, that is when you make that decision. Like, look, the Falcons drafted B. John Robinson, and he is a great player, really talented, but does he really make a difference on a week to week basis for the Falcons? Not a big enough one to justify a top 10 pick. So, yeah, I think this is just a, a total miscalculation. But talk about a, a, a team that did not miscalculate, and that's Mike Tomlin. And this is why he is well compensated in his own words. One of my favorite quotes of the NFL season, they go to Russell Wilson, despite being four and two, despite Justin Fields looking okay, looking frisky, we'll say, but it clearly looks like it was the right move for the Steelers. Michelle, I know that's a team, obviously, that you care about deeply. Do you think that the Steelers have made the right move and obviously need to stick with Russell Wilson going forward? Listen, I was super nervous before the move, right? Okay. I didn't know. Right. Like I thought Russ might be, you know, a bit rusty coming in in a new system, but oh, the offense looks so much better and actually moved with like ease yep. and it looks so hard. And I love that Russell Wilson's willing to just throw it up to George Pickens, even when he's not open. That's something that Russ has been willing to do for all of his wide receivers. He doesn't need to see the guy open. He will trust his wide receiver. That's what you have to do to Pickens. And Russ is going to be great in this Arthur Smith offense because of how much he excels throughout his whole career, uh, but also even last year with the Broncos it, it, with play action. And we yes. saw him excel with play action last week. So it's going to be great with Arthur Smith's offense. And he's definitely the way to go over Justin Fields. So I feel great about the, the move from Mike Tomlin. Yeah, I know more than most that Arthur Smith is a true play action merchant. He lives off the play action. I have to ask you this question because the Steelers, I still think, do need wide receiver help. I think they are one playmaker on the offensive side of the ball away from maybe truly being able to make a deep push into the playoffs. And at 5-2, and two, you can justify it. I look around at a lot of the names, and we're going to hear some more names here in just a moment when we talk about the 49ers and the Cowboys. Um, but Cooper Cup yep. is a name that's on the market. And when you have George Pickens, who's a big jump ball guy, I know that Russell Wilson's never been great over the middle of the field, and neither is Justin Fields. Like, that's not where they excel. But if there is one combination that I think makes a ton of sense on the trade deadline, it's the Steelers going out and getting Cooper Cup. You're not trading within the conference, which I think is more palatable for the Los Angeles Rams. Cooper Cup has a significantly different skill set than George Pickens, which me personally, I like to build my wide receiver group like a basketball team. I want different skill sets and sizes. As someone who cares about the Steelers, would you want to see them go out and maybe give up a second round pick or a third round pick at minimum for a guy like Cooper Cup and maybe try to make that push? A third rounder all day for Cooper Cup. I've been refreshing Twitter all day long to, for <laughs> hoping this Cooper Cup trade happens for the Steelers. Right. I would love it. You you brought up they'd be he'd be a great compliment to what George Pickens offers you. Right. Because of what a good separator Cooper Cup is, he could be that possession mm -hmm. wide receiver while you hit George Pickens deep and on those yep. tight window throws would be perfect together. Uh so yeah, I, I'm really hoping for that as a Steelers fan. And you know what? I I come back to this. It's funny, I have my conversations with people across the network who are more analytically brained than I am. I'm kind of a classic old school football guy, you know, spit on it and you'll be fine. Cooper Cup just looks like a Steeler to me. He just looks like a Pittsburgh Steeler. I don't know how else to explain it. The vibes are there, you know. He kind Shut of plays up, like a Heinz Ward. Guy. He kind of like, plays like a Heinz Ward. With yes, like his yes, personality. I think he could play with that type of, with that type of verb. We'll say, but with that being said, there's a big classic matchup. We go from one of the, probably the best organization in NFL history in the Steelers to two other great organizations in the 49ers and Cowboys facing off this weekend. And I think both those teams have a move that they need to make. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Hey, NFL fans, yep. 
NFL fans, I am talking to you. You could start the second quarter of the NFL season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you go on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You could check out all the latest stats. You can view live play-by-play and so much more on the same exact page where you place your bets. It's an all-encompassing hub of football information. And right now, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And tomorrow is FanDuel Friday, and your boy, the madman, has been on a hot streak. So make sure that you tune in to FanDuel Friday with me and the mastermind, Ross Jackson, and I'll tell you exactly how you can place that first $5 bet. Make sure you go to America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel. That's at FanDuel.com. All right, Michelle, we are going to cap off today's edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Big trade conversation day. The Chiefs make a big move. The Titans make a couple of trades on the day. Alvin Kamara should have been traded. The Steelers need to go get a wide receiver. And the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers, they need to go get a wide receiver as well. Who would be the best fit for either of those teams? We're going to give our answers, but I do want to remind you to make sure that you check out the afternoon edition of Locked on NFL with Tony Wiggins, the barber himself, in the barber shop. A lot of fun conversation in the NFL right now. You want to get your double dose of it with me in the morning and Tony Wiggins in the afternoon. But let's start with San Francisco here because uh, my guy, Brian Peacock, and my guy, Eric Crocker from Locked On 49ers, broke down all of the available wide receiver options that are out there right now. But there's a lot of moves to potentially be had for the 49ers if John Lynch hits the phones. And I'm sure he's already starting to hit the phones and just check in, checking in on, on who potentially might be available. And I'm going to start with a name that I think won't cost a lot, Croc. Mike Williams of the Jets now is absolutely on the trade market. How about this? According to reports, Cooper Cup might be available, which is unfortunate because he's definitely not going to the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Here's a true X receiver. If the Bengals lose a couple more games before the trade deadline, what about T. Higgins as a true rental? Because you're not going to be signing him to a long-term deal after the season. Darius Slayton, Kendrick Bourne, Adam Thielen, Christian Kirk, DeAndre Hopkins, Jacoby Myers, and Deontay Johnson. Jacoby Myers and Christian Kirk, very interesting. I think Christian Kirk 100% fits the, the bill that the 49ers are looking for as a receiver. So, those are a lot of names. I'm going to say, for me, looking at what Kyle Shanahan typically wants in his wide receivers and who's available, I think Deontay Johnson is the best fit. That That's what I, that's what I would go with if, if I were the 49ers. I think he can be had from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Andy Dalton gets in a car crash. It looks like Bryce Young is going to be starting once again. They're going nowhere fast. They should clearly want to get rid of Deontay Johnson, who's on the last year of his contract. I think Deontay Johnson is the best fit for the 49ers. Do you like that, or do you see a better fit out there? He might be a fine fit, and if I had to pick one of those guys, it would be Deontay or Christian Kirk. I don't. I actually personally don't think the 49ers need to go out and trade at all. They have Ricky Pearsall. They just got back. They're for, they just spent a first-round pick on him. They have Juwan Jennings, which, by the way, when I heard Mike Williams, Juwan Jennings is the better Mike Williams right now. I know he's dealing with a hip injury, but he should be back this week. Christian McCaffrey's right. coming back after the bye. They just have to get yep. through this one week. They'll be healthy again. They have George Kittle, foot sprain, but they, he should be fine after the bye. You have Debo Samuel dealing with pneumonia, but again, fine after the bye. They have plenty of pieces still on this offense. There's no need to trade for anyone. Let the young buck, Pearsall, get his feet wet and, uh, you know, get him out there, get him some targets, and then you still have Kittle and Debo and Christian McCaffrey to target and not just Pearsall. They're fine. Hmm, that's that's interesting. I, I don't think that they're fine. I think they definitely need Brandon some more Ayuk help. Brandon Ayuk is doing absolutely nothing this year besides dropping the ball. So they're not really missing out on Ayuk not being there. He dropped and the ball right. so many times. You're right, but the best version of the 49ers, Brandon Ayuk, was incredibly important. So this year, you're right, but I don't think that they can get back to the level that they need to be at to win a Super Bowl without a valid replacement for Brandon Ayuk, and I don't think that you can rely on Ricky Pearsall to be that right now, I guess. I, I don't know if I could rely on a rookie that much. So I do understand what you're saying. I do, but I think 
I think to be what they want to be, they need more help, I guess. But on the Dallas side of things, looking at the names that are available, I think Mike Williams would make some sense. Again, I like to build my wide receiver group as a basketball team. I want varying skill sets and sizes. And when you have a guy like C.D. Lamb that plays in the slot so well and and can do that short to intermediate stuff and even go deep. Of course, CeeDee Lamb is a do-it-all wide receiver, but really good over the middle of the field, out of the slot. If you get a guy like Mike Williams for cheap, and obviously Dallas doesn't want to spend anything this year. Jerry Jones can say they're going all in all he wants, but don't fire me, Jerry. Don't fire me, Jerry. That's all I'm saying. But I think that Mike Williams could be had for a seventh round conditional pick. I mean, the Jets really don't have a use there. You add a big bodied guy who can be a jump ball wide receiver down the field to go with the CD lamb. To me, I, I like that fit. It's okay. I, I don't know if Mike Williams has it left, right? Right. Or at least right. this year he's coming off the ACL tear. So a lot of times it does take guys at least a full year to recover. Yeah after that tear and he's getting older. So it might take even longer. Maybe he'll never come yeah. back to what he was. He's, he's and I been don't, hurt a lot. You know? I don't really see Dak, the guy to throw up these deep balls to Mike Williams. If he's not open, it's not sure. going to be like the situation, like where a Russ would do that. If the Steelers traded for Mike Williams, right? but you don't need Pickens and Williams. That would just be like copy and pasting the same yeah. person, but yeah. older. Uh, but with the Cowboys, honestly, Cooper cup, I think would make a really nice addition mm. there. I know that that would mean lamb and cup kind of have to slit their time in the slot and outside, but it would be really hard to cover both lamb and cup. That would make it very interesting for defenses. I think you're hundred percent right, but ain't no way old man. Jerry is ponying up the money to bring in Cooper cup. I just, I can't believe that after everything that they've done, but I agree in general that that would obviously make the Cowboys more formidable. The one name, that we didn't pair up with anybody here is Christian Kirk. And I think with the emergence of Brian Thomas Jr., with Evan Ingram being a guy who can win over the middle of the field, with the money that Jacksonville just gave to Gabe Davis, I do think that if Jackson, Jacksonville got a win against the Patriots because the Patriots are going nowhere fast, but I still don't think that Jacksonville is going to turn this thing around and be a playoff team or anything like that. Christian Kirk could be a guy who's much more available than people realize, and I think he would be a great addition for a team that is trying to contend. I don't see a, a clear fit necessarily, but maybe if San Francisco wanted to pay a little bit less, maybe you could get Christian Kirk instead of Deontay Johnson for a couple rounds later of a pick. I, I just think that Christian Kirk is a guy who could be moved, even if we didn't necessarily match him to a team. Yeah, maybe Christian Kirk to the Buccaneers now that they lost oh, Chris Godwin. Yeah. That would be yeah. huge. I mean, the Baker's looking pretty good. He's throwing interceptions, but he's looking pretty good. They want to keep going for this uh, division title they got to fill that role of Chris Godwin and Mike Evans is going to be out for three weeks at least now too. So right. I can see Christian Kirk there. Yeah. And he's already in Florida. So just hop in the car, a couple hours drive and, and you're already there. You probably don't have to move your family or anything like that. You know, it's a bit of a commute, but Hey, we all do it. So it is what it is, but yeah, that's going to do it for today's edition of locked on NFL. I mean, this is a crazy time in the NFL. I'm scared to record a lot of times during the, cause you never know when the next news can hit. And then your episode is wiped out and all that. But always going to make sure we have the latest and greatest news for you here on the Locked On NFL podcast. Uh, that's going to do it for me today, as I said, and my co-host, the Data Queen, Michelle Majuk. I am the madman, Tyler Rowland. And as we tell you guys every single Thursday, stay safe out there. Bye, y'all.